Hello, everybody. Hello, it's Tracy here, Coach Tracy. On Wednesday, I shifted things up just a little bit this week as I had an appointment yesterday late afternoon. So we're doing Wellness Wednesday. And the topic today, we're going to be talking about fear of missing out. Um, I know it's something um, I remember, gosh, as a kid and all of, um, lots of times in my life, FOMO has shown up and you know, it just causes some real challenges and um, can really put your mindset in a place that's not not serving you. And so anyway, we're going to talk about that today and um, give you some tips on how if you are experiencing fear of missing out, you notice that you have a lot of anxiety because of that and <clears throat> stuff. I've got some great tips for you as well. So um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um if you are listening in on the podcast, this is recorded live. So, and there will be no edits. So just FYI on that. So if anything happens, um, that's why we're not editing the um, broadcast. So um, yeah, so today, you know, I want to help you live more mindfully, um, you know, and, and help, help you get out of that FOMO, fear of missing out loop. And, um, and like I said, before we you know, I get to that, um, some options to help you get out of it. Um, um, we're going to go ahead and talk over what can cause fear of missing out. What happens with that? So um, make sure my phone is off. There we go. So as I understand now, fear of missing out is not a new behavior. It was something that's been in our DNA from, gosh, when we were hunters and gatherers. So we had to make sure we were in the know so that we could find food, so that we could make sure we understood what was going on in, say, the tribe. And so it's something that is in our brain that is always aware and paying attention as, is, are we missing out on something? So so it's happened now for us again, like um, with stress and things like that, we have something that's in us, uh, <clears throat> just a DNA you know, connection to a behavior that really doesn't serve us much anymore, and especially in today's world. So, you know, FOMO is linked to that stress response. And, um, you know, in ancient civilizations, it was very, very um, helpful, again, for survival. So, um, yeah, and so the brain really, we specialize in sensing it, if we are being left out, we have that skill. So, um, but again, fear of missing out usually doesn't mean uh, life and death anymore, like like it used to. So anyway, um, if we're always in fear of missing out, that can really lead to you know uh, detrimental consequences that aren't healthy for us. And so one I'm going to talk to tonight is about social media, because social media is such uh, so impactful on all of us and on all of our lives. So. So social media and technology are triggering the latest form of FOMO. And um, basically, you know, some professionals, they're, they're viewing uh, FOMO as actually an addiction um, and the behavior as, as an addiction. So feeling left out, um, a fear of missing out, you know, it doesn't feel good. And that's why we try to avoid that form of stress. But unfortunately, in the process of avoiding the stress, you know, we create a new behavior of constantly checking social media, um, see if we're missing out on anything. Um, and this this does um, not lessen our stress by constantly checking our phones and, and worrying if we're missing anything. So um, uh, fear of missing out is a state of mind. So it's a state of mind um, and a mental a state of mental emotional stress. And <clears throat> there are, you know, significant um, health challenges associated with it. it so, um, you know, it's including but not limited to these, these items here, but sleep deprivation, binge eating, binge drinking, lack of focus, anxiety, um, less participation in academic events, um, a very cluttered schedule, um, you know, insomnia. So um, it just invades that part of your mind and it causes us to behave and do actions contrary to something that would help us, you know, with our health. So, um, 
you know, basically too, it causes lack of time spent on academics. It, um, it can affect us at work. It can even um, make it so we don't do any self-improvement, you know, and take care of ourselves. So um, it can make us miss out on our own life goals. So, so anyway, um, FOMO causes, this is interesting, FOMO can, you know, fear missing out causes young people to participate in risk-taking behaviors and in an attempt to, you know, um, avoid feeling left out. We see that a lot on social media. Um, and sadly, you know, that just can worsen the, you know, unhappiness that someone might be experiencing. So, so it's like in an attempt to avoid a negative negative feelings associated with being behind social media has become a platform, you know, for people to develop to divulge personal information about themselves and their activities with the public. And so this can basically come at a cost, you know, leading to also online bullying, online mocking, um, and um, actually lower self esteem when young people are doing this. And so um, and it's not just young people, I shouldn't say that, but um, the the aspect of is why would someone be in that fear of missing out cycle? And usually it's because someone it has some kind of origination of unhappiness. So um, it's known that FOMO now is an addiction. Studies have shown that, that FOMO leads people to check social media right after they wake up um, before they go to bed during meals. So it's interesting, you know, how often do you check your phone? I know a lot of my business is on my phone, my professional business, which makes it really challenging for me. And I check my phone way too much. And sometimes I wish I didn't have a social media platform because it is so invasive and I feel like I have to check it, but you know, it is worth all of us looking at how often do we check our phones for the new email, the new text, the new social media, you know, cause we don't want to miss out on that. Um, you know, a time article reported that people between the ages of 18 and 24 check their phones an average of 74 times a day. So if we multiply that by gosh, I wonder how, how much time they're spending on it each time. Um, people between the age of 25 and 34 check their phones an average of 50 times a day. And then people between the ages of 35 and 44 check their phones an average of 35 times a day. And so I think it's funny. Um, huh. I think it's funny that the uh, article left out at uh, age 44, like and nobody 44 and older has a smartphone. <laughs> Or it's checking social media. <laughs> anyway, I found that humorous. Anyway, but um, but anyway, any one of us, we don't realize that, you know, we possibly are using social media to try and make ourselves feel better. But in reality, this can make us actually feel worse. So um, we don't, you know, platforms like Facebook don't really, you know, Instagram, all of them, they don't really paint a realistic a, you know, picture of people's lives, because we're all posting the good stuff, the perfect stuff, you know. Um, and so then we can, as others start comparing ourselves to something that's really not a reality. So um, research also showed that people with FOMO have ambivalent feelings towards Facebook, meaning, you know, it brings them up, then Facebook brings them up, and then it slams them back down, you know, again, strengthening the cycle of the up and down being anxious. Um, and, um, you know, it's like the precise um, highs and lows of someone with an addiction. Um, and so there's um, another piece of info. What did I do with it? Well, I'll find it. But again, um, fear of missing out can be like someone that's an alcoholic. They just have to keep looking and they really don't have a lot of control um, over their behaviors in relation to um, the fear of missing out. So um, so here's a good one. You can think about this too. So can you guess the most significant disadvantage of having FOMO, fear of missing out? Um, so there's many disadvantages, but basically it's the obsession with what could be. 
rather than accepting what is. And when we're continually looking for the next new thing um, or stressing over documenting our activities via social media, just to prove we're one of you, um, we miss out on living in the actual moment. And um, we can then become really overwhelmed, continually trying to find what we might be missing out on, you know, and that's causing us to forget to focus on our own here and now and our own joy are here. So we're so focused on where everyone, what everyone else is doing. And we don't want to miss out that we forget to ask ourselves, what, what are we wanting out of life? And who is it that we want to be? Okay. And I know for me, um, I've really scaled back posting on Facebook because it's just too stressful. Um, I figure out, gosh, I got to pick the photo. I've got to write something. And, you know, and, and I found that that was giving me a lot of anxiety. And, um, and so I've really pulled back on posting and I just feel so much more settled, so much more relaxed. So um, now it's like um, for fear of missing out, how does that affect our relationships, right? So people um, with FOMO can surround themselves with people, but that doesn't mean that they are engaged in deep, you know, meaningful relationships. Um, so, you know, our deep, meaningful relationships are vital to our overall well-being. And so the studies are showing that individuals with a supportive and rewarding relationships have better mental health, higher levels of subject uh, of subjective well-being and lower rates of morbidity and mortality. So um, relationships are essential for us and to cope with stress and adversity, um, as well as you know, our own way of learning, um, growing, exploring, um, achieving goals, cultivating new talents, finding purpose and meaning in life is a lot through these relationships. And so a lot of these studies are reporting that people who regularly take part in satisfying relationships with, with family, friends, and their community are happier, um, have fewer health problems, you know, and, and actually live longer. So, so um, building those quality relationships is really important. Um, and, you know, here's just a few things to help do that, you know, is communication, communication with people, um, you know, being connected um, being respectful, respecting others is very important. You know, honesty, being, you know, being true to our word and that's to ourselves as well, you know, being true to our own word and then dependability. And that is again in relationships to others and with ourselves. So once we, um, you know, we go ahead and work on those things that can help us settle down and stop doing this fear of missing out behavior. So um, right now, like I said a little earlier, there's main two areas that are driving fear of missing out today, and that's social media and social pressure. So social media, well, it can be great for us to keep in touch with our family and friends and everything. But it also, like I said, um, we also, it, I guess it's really reliant on technology more than anything. And we also will focus more on you know, do we get a click and a like, or, you know, we're still using that as a way to feel better versus, you know, the aspect of us actually getting on the phone and talking to somebody, you know, we get, we get by, by just clicking and, and, um, you know, but the happiness of like, I'll find myself doing it too. How many likes did I get on a post? And it's like, now it's like, I don't care anymore because <laughs> it's too stressful and it doesn't matter. Right. But, but that happiness that they're saying, the happiness of getting a click, you know, or a whole bunch of likes is again, that nice spike, and then it can crash you right back down. So, um, you know, our innate human need is to connect with others. We just, it's just not something we can do through clicks and likes on social media. The other thing would be, again, today is, is social pressure. And as social pressure has been around for a long time, um, you know, obligation to attend certain events when maybe you didn't want to, or you, you know, but, but again, this obligation to, um, you know, the, the fear of missing out, you go to an event because you don't want to miss out 
fear of missing out, but you really don't want to be there. So, you know, it's sort of that, that aspect of your, you're basically um, compelling to do things that you don't enjoy because you don't, you also have that fear of missing out. So that's um, one thing that, um, you know, I wrote a lot about in, in the book, our book, Your Personal Journey with Food is just that honoring yourself, honoring your decisions, um, having, um, uh, you know, the, if you, if you don't want to do something, you really don't want to do it, then, then go ahead. And, and if you decide to go, why are you doing that? And is it because of fear of missing out? If it is, then, you know, Hey, maybe just say, Hey, I'm not going to go and go and practice that skill of saying no, you know? So, um, Next, we're going to go into um, how we can quiet this fear of missing out. Um, so again, now that we understand how it develops, it's something that's ingrained in us, but we have to be aware of it and how it's affecting us in our lives. Um, the first thing we need to do is find out, usually, again, FOMO is, is leading out of um, some kind of an unhappiness. So... Um, what you want to do is address what's making you unhappy. And so in, in, um, in my book, like we, Ingrid and I did a life radar and it's on page five of the book. And again, we're just assessing our life. And so we can, in this radar picture, you can, you know, rate yourself in a certain area and that's anywhere from, you know, um, health relationships, um, physical activity, joy, spirituality, relationships, finances, creativity, social life, career, education, and cooking, those kinds of things. And what we look for is, is there an area that, that you may be feeling is, is um, making you unhappy? And that area is going to affect the rest of your, you know, other areas of your life. So maybe you're feeling lacking in connection with relationships, you know, so working on that, um, it's essential for us to figure out the root of the unhappiness. And, and again, that way, you know, we can, we can, you know, minimize that, that fear of missing out um, reaction. So negative thoughts, and I write about a negative thought, you know, in the book too, this negative thought patterns, they can, you know, run in your mind. And we have to realize that these negative thoughts can manifest in numerous forms. So what we want to remember is the is that the thought patterns can change and thoughts are not facts. So here are a few common negative mindsets that can cause us to turn to FOMO behaviors. So judging yourself in a harsh way. Um, Again, I write about it in the book, you know, how, how, what, you know, how does that judgment against yourself um, make you feel? And how do you, how do you turn that negative talk around? Right. So when we, when we're um, overly critical, and that critical inner voice is, you know, in there just being negative and nasty, um, we have to realize that's just the self talk is not the truth. Instead, we want to practice compassion um, and compassion for ourselves, you know, because my little negative Nelly is going to show up, you know, and she has a lot to say and her opinion is pretty important, you know, and it's the right one, right? <laughs> and so me learning is really helping a lot to learn how to turn that part of my mind around to be more positive, more understanding, more compassionate towards myself. And thus, that leads me to be more compassionate towards others. It's really interesting. So negative Nelly. And, and then there's a the concept of blaming. Um, so blaming ourselves or others for misfortune can't lead to a positive outcome. So um, a lot of psychologists say playing the blame game is the, one of our most destructive behaviors. We like to blame others for things that happen to our lives. But we, you know, and we like to blame ourselves sometimes for things that, you know, we really don't have control over, right? So, um, you know, what we want to do is just sometimes some things are just out of our own control. We've all learned that with this, you know, COVID-19 out of our control, you know. And so um, 
when we um, when we realize the only thing we can control is really our response um, and how we react to situations, um, good situations and bad situations. Um, and, you know, blaming others as well is something that we like to do. Um, and I think it might be out of protection, but what's being recommended is that when we do have a, a situation that's going on, yes, someone may have inflicted something upon us, but we can control our own responses to those things. And that's one of the most important things. And then again, just having that compassion, you know, um, um, for ourselves and for others will help. Um, so we want to then also, it's like breaking a bad habit. So FOMO is, has a lot to do with our habits, um, replacing harmful practices with more positive um, will help break this pattern. So um, one way we can cause unhappiness is through bad habits and addictions. So FOMO behaviors are addictions, um, just like smoking, just like over drinking. And while these, these behaviors kind of relieve stress in the moment, we know they have harsh, um, um, they will create a harsh response to us on the downside. So um, we think that they like smoking can relieve your stress. Um, it's an illusion. Um, you know, so when we try to band aid over something, um, it just makes things worse. So there's lots of ways to beat addictions. And ultimately, the need to decide to be healthy and happy, you know, and deciding to participate in more positive behaviors. And, um, you know, a FOMO, a FOMO alcoholic may experience loneliness, frequent anxiety, um, life distraction, and low self-esteem, all which can lead to a depression. So, so if we can look at it that way, that's a behavior, maybe that's something that has come up, you know, we don't even realize maybe we're doing it, you know, but being aware is going to be really important. Um, another habit that we want to go ahead and break is comparing ourselves to others. So again, social media brings out everybody showing their perfect life, their perfect outfit, their perfect this, their perfect that. And we'll start comparing ourselves to that. And that's been going on forever. You know, I think humans just do that. But there's always, always going to be someone with more money, better hair, um, better clothes, whatever it might be, there always will be. And, and, um, you know, if we it's guaranteed, even if we gained those things, we may not be happy because happiness starts within ourselves, right. And, um, you know, it comes from within. So instead of comparing your situation to that of others, make your own life as, as good as you can. And that's been something too, as you know, through my life journey, um, I had to learn to stop comparing myself to others, you know, um, and thinking if, oh, I could just get that, then I'll be happy. If I just had the perfect body, if I could just have my everything be perfect, then my life would be great. And that's why I yo-yo dieted all the time, you know, and I'd get there, I have the perfect weight, I'd be in shape. And you know what, I was still unhappy, because I didn't do the work from the inside out, you know, so, okay, so great ways for you to reduce the stress and anxiety that that really causes FOMO. So we want to do natural and healthy ways to do that. And so, so we can kick those FOMO, um, FOMO addiction. So there are lots of ways to reduce stress and anxiety, but um, here's some good ones. I know I've said this before on um, yoga, um, get out and connect with nature, get out for a walk. You know, that's one thing COVID-19 helped force me to do. It got me outside um, more than ever. Go ahead and journal, meditate, learn to be present, just, you know, be okay being where you are and settled. Um, practice a calming breathing technique, um, exercise, let that body move. You know, if you're stressed out, your body needs to move. You know, I say like, you know, burn that adrenaline, burn that cortisol out. So, so, um, some of my best runs were when I was really stressed out because I had to, 
you know, get rid of it. And yeah, your body wants to run. You know, it wants to move fast because that's what it's programmed to do under stress. So exercise, <laughs> do some really, you know, good body movement. Um, volunteer. Um, yep. Go for a run. Join a team sport. Um, oh, I love this. For readers, do a book club. Um, get regular sleep on a regular schedule. I fought that one. I fought that one big time. But Oh, it's so much nicer now when I sleep on a schedule um, and get creative. You know, it's like I was telling you earlier about that radar, the life radar is there's creativity, social life, career, finances, relationships, all those things are important. And so if you can look at what's going on in your life, you know, we can go ahead and, um, you know, help do that. And I realize I got to plug in my laptop. I didn't plug it in. It's going to hold on one sec. Yeah, this broadcast is going to end in two seconds if I don't plug this in. All right, <laughs> the show will go on. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, so get regular sleep, be creative, um, allow yourself time to do things that are valuable to you. Um, yeah, deep breathing exercises are wonderful. Um, you know, there's some great techniques that I've used. One is, um, it's called four, seven, eight breathing. You, you can do this in the car. If you're really stressed out, if you're at work, um, and you need a moment, no one knows that you're doing it, but you can just do a nice breath in for four and you're through your nose. And then you're going to hold for the count of seven and breathe out through your lips for a count of eight. So it's four in, hold for seven, and then out for eight. And you do that a couple times a day. It really helps. There's also a shorter one. If you have time, you can close your eyes, you know, um, breathe naturally through your nose and, you know, really just trying to control that breath. Um, just be aware of your breath, you know, just being focused. And it's a shorter one. You can take a deep breath in for a count of four, hold for three and out for four. So what you want to do is go ahead and try and release those stressful thoughts just for that moment, you know, being present. So that really helps bring down uh, stress levels. We've talked about this before, mindfulness, right? You can see how everything's connected from all of my other videos, um, podcasts, all of this is interconnected. So mindfulness is a key element, miss, you know, element missing from the FOMO lifestyle. So mindfulness is basically a technique that refers to a non-judgmental observation of awareness that is focused on the present experience. So you're just being fine being here. You know, and I do find myself sometimes, you know, thinking, you know, I know when I grew up and we, we didn't, you know, we had what, uh, a few TV channels, like, I don't know, seven or eight, maybe not even that, five TV channels, um, one phone in the house. That was it, you know, and so you really did settle in, you could settle in for a book, you maybe watched a couple shows, but now it's like, there's so many options. Oh my gosh, am I missing out on this show? Am I missing out on that show? You know, now there's social media, you know, and sometimes I just really miss that moment where when I, I feel so blessed and lucky to have grown up in a time when I could be totally present. So be, you know, practice being where you are enjoying, you know, if you're out with friends, enjoy being with them. If you're in a book, be present with that book, you know, whatever that is, when you're exercising, be there and relax and be where you are. So that's really going to help help you a great deal. And eventually, you don't even won't even worry about how how you did it. Um, that you know that you were being mindful. Um, so here's some great things you can do, and we're almost done here. But um, a couple exercises to get you started, which are kind of cool. Undivided attention exercise. So do something around the house, something like washing the dishes can be meditative practice if done with un, un I can do this undivided attention <laughs> and pay close attention to how the water feels against your skin, how the soap smells, etc. Um, I was working at uh, uh, the uh, Mary Mar garden plot today in the volunteering and um, we were harvesting onions. 
and it was very meditative. I was just sitting there. I had to cut the roots off and I had to cut the top off. And then I had to rub the outer part of the onion to try to get the dirt off. And it was like, uh, I was like, oh my gosh, these onions are really pretty. I never noticed all the beautiful colors or the different shapes, you know? So being, you know, having undivided attention into something, um, a candle staring exercise, again, is the same thing. Look at the candle, notice the colors, maybe the way, you know, the wick is turned, um, you know, is the flame bouncing, you know, do something like that. Um, mindful hand awareness. I love this one. You grasp your hands tightly and hold them for five to 10 seconds. And then you release your hands and pay attention to how your hands feel um, and keep your attention focused on how they feel as long as you can. Um, <laughs> social media exercise. This one's a good one. I, I practice this one a bit. When you are on social media and see something that someone shared that really irks you, close your eyes, take a few deep breaths and focus on your feelings and then let them go. Okay. So um, it's just, again, being present and aware and, um, and gratitude, the power of gratitude will help you, um, you know, refrain from fear of missing out. So um, gratitude is just a huge boost um, to our overall happiness. And so FOMO is the result of unhappiness, then gratitude is the antidote. So there are many ways to bump your gratitude meter. Um, appreciate everything. There's nothing too small for you to be thankful for. So I might want to say, hey, I'm thankful for that little, little icon in the top of my laptop that let me know the battery was about, my, my laptop was just about to go down. You know, I'm so grateful for that, <laughs> you know, I'm so grateful for this pen, you know, so I could write notes. Um, and I'm really grateful for everybody watching. So just anything, appreciate everything. And it's not, you know, it's not only about being thankful for positive experiences. We got to find gratitude in our challenges as well. So, and that can be hard, but, you know, challenge brings lesson, challenges bring growth. So how can we be grateful for those things and do a gratitude journal? And I, I realize I'm so happy about this, um, this um, uh, stuff that I was looking up because it reminded me I have my little gratitude journal that I had forgotten about. And I like to write little, little gratitudes in there every day, maybe five things. Um, so I do that. Volunteering can make you feel more gratitude for the things that you have um, or you may have taken for granted. Um, you know, giving back to others really can, um, you know, increase our own well-being. Share your gratitude of others by expressing that same gratitude to the people you care about. So this can, you know, both make your day bright and also increase the level of someone else's. Um, boost your happiness in other areas of your life that may be lacking. Being grateful can make you happy. Uh, but being happy can also make you grateful. So it's both ways. And so anyway, whatever method you prefer, you know, keep in mind the brain is that our brains are like incredible. And so when we train it to be grateful, um, gratitude comes more easily. And then I love this one. Replace FOMO with JOMO. <laughs> so we know FOMO is the fear of missing out. And what do we think JOMO might be? Joy of missing out. <laughs> so it's about, again, understanding yourself, um, your needs and your desires to be truthful to you. And JOMO helps you encourage you to embrace the pleasure of choosing what you want to do or not do. Um, and at the heart of JOMO is the power to act in a way that engages and fulfills you. So again, Ingrid and I write about this in the book, Your Personal Journey with Food, because all of this relates to food too, okay? And um, here is a list of reasons why you should ditch the FOMO and embrace JOMO. Um, instead of spending free time consumed by the drama of social media, email and text messages, you can choose to disconnect and spend time discovering and doing things that make you happy. Okay. Um, you don't have to have every moment planned. Go ahead and have time for your schedule to flow, um, allow for spontaneity, um, you know, and you know, that's a chance to ask what the quieter inner voice wants to experience. 
I love this because yes, we talked about that in the book, that quiet inner voice that's, you know, talking to you um, that can help you hear it. Um, embrace the feeling of different emotions. So we want to try and turn off or not feel things. So we will use technology or get a quick fix for being bored, lonely, sad, or frustrated. We, we use technology. Um, so, you know, avoiding emotions, again, um, doesn't help. So we want to go ahead and embrace the lows that make the highs that much richer. Um, and we're humans. And so that's great. We can experience a range of emotions, which is wonderful. And then Jomo helps you live in the here and now. So stop looking for the next activity and simply find appreciation for where you are now, what you're doing now, living in the present. Um, imagine having and giving undivided attention to those you are in the presence of rather than only half heartedly listening while you scour social media. And we're all guilty of that. <laughs> I am as well. So anyway, and uh, embrace your embrace your Jomo. Okay. So step one, disconnect your technology, put your phone in a different room. Turn off your electronics, whatever it takes to step away. This might be challenging at first, but it's okay, you know, and, and you can ease into it. Again, it's just a new habit. Um, commit to a certain amount of time each day to disconnect. So plan your activity during this time to be, you know, to help serve as a, distra a distraction until you become used to being detached. So activities could include writing, um, going for a walk, looking through an old photo album, the possibilities are unlimited. Um, step three, reconnect in person. So look people in the eye when you talk to them rather than through your phone. Um, this step can also include reconnecting with yourself and indulging in something you like. And then understand what others, re what, yeah, I love this. Understand what others regret in life. It's typically deeper more meaningful aspects of life, such as not living our personal truths, not appreciating our relationships, not spending time with friends, and not being honest about who we really are. And attending an event out of obligation is going to be pretty low on this list. So, so again, you know, what really matters in your life, we need to determine what that is. And it's probably not streaming social media. So, Lastly, here's a couple quotes that are really great. Um, For everything you have missed, you have gained something else by Ralph Waldo Emerson. The reason we struggle with insecurity is that we compare our behind the scenes with everyone else's highlight reel. That's from Steve Furtick. And I've learned that people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. Maya Angelou. All right, well, that was a ton of info today. <laughs> so um, lastly, to close up, um, so I covered um, these takeaways. FOMO is the fear of missing out and it stems from unhappiness and it's not a solution, but a distraction from that unhappiness. Um, FOMO can negatively impact both mental and physical uh, health. FOMO provides temporary avoidance but the underlying challenge remains. FOMO exasperates stress and anxiety. Um, meaningful relationships are more beneficial in the long run, both in overall well being and in health. Um, deep breathing exercises can help reduce stress and anxiety, um, as well as exercising, <laughs> getting outside. Um, practice gratitude. Practicing gratitude will rewire our brain for happiness and replace FOMO with JOMO and that can lead to healthier habits and overall happiness. So, all right, everybody, um, I've gone way past my time today, but, but yeah, you know, fear of missing out is a real thing and it can really, um, you know, take part of your life away. So, um, you know, millions of people have fear of missing out and um i'm working on mine and uh so so anyway um live in the present be here now um and um yeah check out my book your personal journey with food 
a roadmap for the confused and frustrated dieter because it's all connected. All right. Have a great night, everyone. And I'll see you next week. Take care. I can find my mouse. We just love technology today. Okay, here we go. Talk to y'all later. Bye-bye.